after the feasibility reviews, so basically when the you know, technology director and the art director are happy, then you move over to a detailed design. And a detailed design might mean that the fur of the rabbit is supposed to be peach blossom instead of just pink. It's supposed to eat 10 grams of carrots every minute, and it uses uh, a chewing animation that's the same for everything. We specify that they all look the same, and we specify that they have four non-mobile legs. This is Reichman again. I, I do a similar thing. I check if, if the detailed design is detailed enough. Uh, basically, my criteria is if a programmer can just pick this up and run with it and understand every detail of what he, he should do, then I'm happy. And then we move over to official programmer reviews. This is where we bring in the programmer that's going to be working on each aspect of the bunny. Uh, for a pink fluffy bunny, there might be three different programmers. There might be one that does the eating part, one that does the uh, links to animation to the actual bunny, and one that does the market behavior, the how you buy the bunny and how you tie it into the market. So we bring each of those in separately and maybe we're talking to the eating programmer and we tell them, hey, yeah, and we wanted to eat 10 grams of, of, of carrots every minute. First he would laugh and then he would get angry because he does not want us to do something every minute when it doesn't have to happen that way. Uh, he would say, no, no, no. we, we wanted to eat 600 grams of carrots every hour instead. And that's fine by us. We still, we take a look at our goals again. It has to be cute, it has to eat carrots and something else. And we're just, we're fine with it. 600 grams every hour is just as good for us. So, okay, okay, no problem. Then we do the same thing with the artists that's going to be working on it. And maybe we decide that we want a five second looping chewing animation. So again, we're, just, we're doing the same thing again, but at a lower level, so we're actually fleshing out every detail here. And the, the programmers and artists are offering their own insight on things. In a perfect world, us designers would never have to touch the thing again. The programmers would just go and do their thing, and the artists would go and do their thing, and we would just see it when it goes live. Unfortunately, we don't live in a completely perfect world, so we need to follow things up we had better follow things up. So what the programmer does when it comes from our awesome meeting, we have a lot of meetings and it's a good thing in this case. He comes from our meeting and what he does is that he goes and looks at his current systems. The eating programmer goes and checks, okay, the eating system is just like that and if I put something in here and I connect these two parts and I take this away, then I'll have everything I need. So he documents this in a technical design document, which is basically the same as our design again, just in programmer speak. Uh, we all know that programmers don't speak the same language as everyone else. And so that's why you need people like me, because I can actually talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> and what I do when I've written the technical design is that I verify it, I compare it to our design, and I make sure that everything matches up. Because it does happen when you're communicating with people that they misunderstand something or you admit saying something they just assume it's supposed to be a certain way. So I have to compare these things and make sure that everything they want to do is the same as what we want to do. Let's take, a, take an example here. The, uh, the eating programmer wrote down that the bunny, when it gets hungry, checks for food in its cage. If there's no food in the case, it's removed from the bunny list and its assets are unloaded from the client. This is programmer free speak for the bunny dies. <laughs> we don't want the bunny to die. That, that's too sad. We want the bunny to go to sleep. So we put that in the design. If there's no food in the case, the bunny goes to sleep. And then the programmer writes that again in programmer speak. And at this point, we're happy. We, we go through everything like this. And when we're happy, the programmer can actually start programming. I'm not going to describe that procedure. Uh, generally, it's described as magic happens here. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much what happens. <laughs> but when they're done, they hand the system off to our QA department. Uh, they don't just check for bugs in what the players are reporting. We actually have a very good procedure in checking bugs in new features as well. 
and new things that are coming out because we don't want that to be broken either. And what our QA department does is they start with making a test plan. This is another one of these awesome documents. Uh, they can actually start before the program start because they use the design documents to make the test plans. And the test plan is something like go to the market, purchase a bunny, make sure the bunny appears in your hanger. Purchase carrots, make sure carrots appear in your hanger. Drag the car carrots over to the bunny case, make sure the carrots appear in the bunny case. Wait for one hour, wait for, uh, verify that the bunny one hour later eats the carrots. And I verify this again, I go through this and compare it to, to the design documents. These are not the most entertaining reads that uh, I wouldn't read before I go to sleep, but it's very useful to, to compare this because if we don't do that, the QA people are either going to find bugs that aren't really bugs, they're going to think something is wrong when it isn't, or they're going to miss some bugs. So I verify this, I compare this to our design document, and in the example I just mentioned, there's a problem, because when you put carrots into a bunny case, the bunny's going to eat it right away. It's not going to wait one hour and just look at it and, when can I do it? Now? Okay, I'll wait. Uh, <laughs> it will just, it's going to eat it right away if it hasn't just eaten it. So then we go back and we update the design document, and QA changes their test plan, and when we've done this with every issue, then we can, they can actually go and test for the bugs. So then they go through all the test plans when, when the programmers have finished their stuff, and they go through everything, and they see if everything matches up. If it doesn't match up, they create a defect, which is what we discussed earlier, that is a confirmed bug. And that is handled in the same way as all the defects. It goes to the programmer, the programmer fixes it, another, another case of magic happening, and then it comes back to QA and they verify that it's fixed. Nothing ever goes out unless QA is fully happy about it. QA are the gatekeepers, they're the uh, guardians of quality. They set a minimum level of quality or, or a maximum level of bugs that can be in, the, in any new feature, anything you were doing. And if we don't satisfy their demands, stuff isn't going out. So I know there's some players here today, and I know you've probably seen delays in an expansion once or twice, or, or paths, and this is usually because either the programmers are taking a bit longer than expected, or because QA just says, no, it's not good enough, it's not going out yet. And so in these cases, the delays are actually good because it means we're not putting out something that isn't ready. I was also asked to mention that we do have positions available for QA, if someone's interested in that. Uh, the qualifications you would need is either a very good understanding of EVE or some quality assurance experience, preferably in software. And again, I'll, I'll, when I get to the last slide, I'll show you how you can, where you can apply, not exactly how. <coughs> 